got the heavy hitters. <laughs> and we've got, uh, we've got one of the great ones from Kenya. Julius, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, so there's three, you know, at Forbes we do three kinds of kind of, when you have kind of those rags to riches sagas, we kind of, you know, sometimes we have like the or stories of orphans, other times maybe it's somebody, they were, you know, they were poor or homeless or they were a refugee or an immigrant, but you, you know, you're like all of those things, which is very, you know, which makes your rise even more impressive. So how much thank of you, this, thank you. yes, maybe take us on, uh, again, on your journey, because it's a true, it's a real, real inspiring story. And by the way, wherever you come from, I want to preface this, you can be super successful because we have somebody like that right here. But maybe, uh, thank give, you. Us, give us a walk. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Randall. And I'm um, delighted to be you are here with the Forbes Africa event, uh, you know, under 30 summit. Yeah, thank you, Excellency, the President and the First Lady for hosting us. Your Excellency, the First Lady of uh, Guinea-Bissau. Yeah, my Ebo, uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President of Kenya, who is with us here, the Deputy President of Namibia, uh, Minister for Nigeria. Thank you very much, the entire delegation for Forbes for coming here. Yeah, and um, I grew up in Kenya. I grew up in Kenya on the western part of Kenya, yeah, near Lake Victoria. Yeah. And I went, to, uh, I went to school and I went to college, I went to military there in Kenya, I was in the Air Force. And then I went to America. Yeah, so when I went to America, uh, it was during 9-11. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it was during 9-11. And during 9-11, uh, September 11 happened and there was issue with security. There was a financial security. And I came up with a technology and invented. Uh, I think I should get. Uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, mic check, mic yeah. check. Yeah. <laughs> we need check. a new technology. Okay, to exactly. Here, uh, yeah. So, so I invented a technology. So I invented. Uh, I invented a technology that uh, was a biometric technology. And I was a pioneer in the world for biometrics. So I invented biometric technology used to secure online transactions. Yeah, you know, in the uh, you know, in the banks in the United States. Yeah, and when I did that, you know, I built my company. My company name was SBA Technologies. Yeah, so it was built up, and of course, it became one of the largest biometric companies in the world. Yeah, so we expanded our technology in over the world, and by the end of the decade, by 2008. Yeah, our company had grown into a multi-billion dollar company in America. Yeah, so we decided, we said, hey, you know, I grew up in Africa, I grew up in Kenya, I want to go back and give back to community in Kenya, give back to the community in Africa. Yeah, so we took um, uh, $4 million invested into a feasibility study uh, with a U.S. company, a big U.S. company. Uh, we wanted to invest in our community in Western Kenya, you know, to be able to grow it, yeah, you know, up. So we spent about $2 billion. So feasibility showed that uh, we needed a $2 billion city, a medical and technology city, that will be able to stop people in Africa from going to India every year for medical treatment. And so we build up, you know, Mwale Medical and Technology City. Yeah, it's built around uh, 5,000 capacity, yeah, you know, medical complex. Yeah, it has a power plant. Yeah, you know, has uh, shopping and dining, has an innovation park, yeah, you know, and integrated, you know, within the community. So it's oh, an integrated community. Level set, when you say you built a city, like, was there a small city that, was this from scratch, or did you take a kind of a city that was kind of small and made it big? Or exactly. So this is a village, this is a village in western Kenya. And so what we did in this village with our IP, uh, we went in this village, and then, you know, we took, you know, an African village, and then, of course, you know, be able to upgrade its infrastructure system. Yeah, so we put in roads. We did about 150 kilometers of tarmac roads, you know, in this village area. Yeah, we did over 3,000 solar street lights, you know, in the city. And then we took the community that was there. It's in a county called Kakamega County. So we took the community that was there and upgraded their homes. Yeah, you know, so there are 35,000 people living in that area. So we upgraded their homes, and they partnered with us in the city. And then, you know, they became, you know, landlords for the workers of our city. 
So we never moved them out. So the price of land grew from about $1,500 an acre to now over $100,000 an acre for these families. So, you know, they became the new African middle class. Thank you. The, um, uh, kind of going back, you know, I, 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 it feels like where you came from is driving what you're doing now. Yeah. When, you, when you first were an entrepreneur, because I want to talk about the city, but I want to talk about it in the context of kind of you know, philosophically why you do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, one thing, you know, and I think it's worth, you know, when you were, uh, you know, an entrepreneur in America, but again, you were an immigrant, you didn't have like a big network or anything, you had yeah. to just, do, what was, how were you able to start something so big when you didn't have, you know, you didn't have money, mm -hmm. you didn't have, res you know, no resources, no mm -hmm. connections. Yeah, yeah. So for anybody out there who's like, well, I want to be, you know, I want to be like Julius, but I'm just me, you know, how do you do that? How do you make that leap? Yes. So what I did, uh, what I did is, um, excuse me. Hello, hello. Number three. Hello, hello. Oh, okay. fixed. Okay. That's what entrepreneurs, yeah. they, they fix. Them. So what, what I did is that uh, I decided, you know, I was, first of all, he didn't tell you. So I was a homeless person in New York City when I went there initially. So I was living in a homeless shelter in New York City. And... You know, when 9-11 happened, I was in this homeless shelter, and I saw the Twin Towers come down. And so uh, uh, when I left the shelter, uh, you know, I, I started, you know, coming this up with research. This is 20 years ago. Exactly. Way, this is about 22 years ago. Yeah. 22 years ago. So, so you were homeless in a shelter on 9-11 in New York. Yes, yes. Exactly. And, we and so, and so I, the idea comes to me. You know, the towers are coming down. And, you know, there's a political upheaval in New York. And, you know, every business is living in the city. And they were like, you know, the financial system of the city is going to get under attack. And, and, you know, someone has to do something about it. Yeah, so I made a proposal yeah, to the local senator, you know, for New York. The name was Hillary Clinton at the time. And, and, you know, the proposal was that, you know, we can protect our financial system by having two levels of authentication. So we could have the username and password. And then we could have a second level where you have an image, a picture. Or you can have, you know, a biometric. And mine was biometric. Yeah, so the senator took the proposal to Congress. Yeah, you know, and it was passed in Congress in 2004. And it became effective as law in the United States in 2006. And my technology, yeah, became the golden standard yeah, for multi-factor authentication in America. Well, what, what I love about that is that, so you were a, and you, were, you had an engineering background, yeah? Yes, right? yes, yes. Is that you, what you, your resources were in between your ears here. You, were, you, you exactly. had the idea, and yes. you, you'd had the training. Exactly. You didn't have the connections, but you had the idea, and you were able to, you know, and then 20 years later, here we are. Exactly. So, so that, 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 I think that's my takeaway from your story, yeah, which is yeah. that if you have the smarts and you have the training, you can find a way, and you did find a way. Exactly. So then with that, so that, you know, so then when you say, okay, well, I'm going to come back to Kenya. Yeah. First, why, why come back to Kenya? I mean, here you are being incredibly successful in America, the American dream. Yeah, yeah. You, you're an immigrant, and you make it in America. Exactly. Why, why come back to Kenya? Exactly. So, so I was born in Kenya, and I was born in Africa. And, you know, we want to, we see ourselves as the leaders for the future. And I'm a business leader. I'm one of the global business leaders in Africa. So I was like, you know, let me go back to my community. Yeah, give people an opportunity. Give people an opportunity to be able to get the same opportunities that I've gotten, you know, within, you know, my training and within my career. And so I decided to basically kind of do this feasibility study, put $2 billion to build this city. So we put $2 billion to build this city. The city opened in 2019, and we have this big hospital there that is treating patients from the county. The county is 2 million people. Yeah, 2 million people in this county. We're treating them without paying any copay or any money yeah, to get treated in our hospital. If they have a system that our vice president has done, it's called the National Hospital Insurance Fund. So if they have National Hospital Insurance Fund, they get free treatment. So they come to a hospital, they get treated for free. I have my head of that system, yeah, Patricia, you know, sitting here in the crowd. Yeah, and you know, they, these are Kenyans born, raised in Western Kenya, and they're the ones running, yeah, this system, yeah, you know, to be able, be able to do that.
So what's so what's the goal of the city? What, what, what you know? What's your long-term vision? Yeah, long-term vision. So if you look at uh, Africa and you look at Kenya, so we have this continental free trade agreement, and what we need to grow Africa, we need what we call IP, intellectual property. So this city is an integrated master development plan. So what it did is that it integrated the local community yeah, into the entire city, into the entire plan that we've done. And so what we've done here is that we want to take this to the continent. So we've taken it so far to Democratic Republic of Congo, Cameroon, you know, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Zambia, and now we're doing Mozambique. So there are 18 locations in 12 cities in Africa that, you know, we have you know, about 5 million acres of land under now our management and control in Africa that we're expanding this project and this city, yeah, you know, all over the continent. So, so, so it's, a, it's a scale model. Exactly. It's a scale model. And we're looking at, you know, from the World Bank data, about 100 million Africans are going to be out of extreme poverty by 2035 with a free trade agreement. And for those 70 million of those will be new jobs, spending about a half a trillion dollars in income that is going to come in with Africa free trade agreement. And we are very, very proud to be here in uh, Botswana, Your Excellency, and we want to get started with a new city here. A new medical and technology city in Botswana. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's exciting. By the way, if you're as successful here as you are, you know, your city uh, in Kenya, you have two million people and they all have free health care. That's the entire country of Botswana. So, yes, so yes, that, you know, that, you. that is scale. Yes, that's scale. Yes. How do you, you know, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned impact, like, and again, I asked a similar question to Moduji, which is, you know, do you see, how do you balance how you create, now what you're doing is, you know, your city is a, it's not philanthropy, it's a, yeah. it's a business project. Exactly, exactly. But yet you're creating incredible, you know, good outcomes exactly. there. How do, you, how do you weigh philanthropy versus kind of exactly. business impact, business investment? Exactly. So integrated business in Africa, you know, the model. Yeah, so what we do is that we let people that live within the county, these are two million people. So if you come in for treatment and you have that card, which is the National Hospital Insurance Fund, issued by government, you get free treatment. But the bigger part of that business is medical tourism. So, you know, we are bringing in medical tourists from the entire East African region. And we came to draw people from here in Botswana, you know, to be able to come there for treatment. Yeah, so we're getting 400 million people in this region for East Africa that used to go to India for medical treatment, and there were about 180,000 mil, of these people going to India every year, spending billions and billions of shillings. And so we've ended, you know, that, you know, that, that overflow of people going for treatment in India, so they're going to come and get treatment, you know, within the area. And we're expanding this, yeah, you know, hospital to 82 new locations through telehealth. Yeah, so we're working on telehealth with big American partners, you know, to expand it, you know, in Kenya and then outside the Kenya to African continent to make sure that Africa, because this is going to be the largest hospital in the world, in the world, you know, here in Africa, employing, you know, uh, 2,000 doctors, 5,000 nurses, and, you know, a lot, about 12,000 support staff. So this is a big investment in healthcare, making Kenya and making Africa to become, you know, healthcare, yeah, you know, maker and medical city, yeah, you know, within the world. And it, and it has to be. I mean, anybody who's been to China, yeah. you see the scale. I mean, there's no such thing as one building. When they build one building, it's like, let's do five exactly like yeah. it, next yeah. to each other. Because, you know, they've got about the same population as the continent of Africa. But yeah. if we're going to solve these problems, you have to think big like that. All right, so let's go 20, uh, 20 years ago, yeah. you're a homeless, yeah. uh, in a homeless shelter. Yeah. And now 20 years later, you're building cities across Africa. Yeah. Where do you see 20 years from now what you're doing? Yeah, 20 years from now. So we see Africa has about, uh, it's going to have about, uh, a quarter of the global population. Its uh, population will double by 2050. And where we see ourselves, you know, in uh, 2050, yeah, we see ourselves being able to move about 800 million people on this continent out of poverty. Mm -hmm. 800 million people in Africa out of poverty by creating, you know, jobs, you know, over the continent. And look at the opportunities we have in Africa today. Yeah, so we have the Africa Free Trade Agreement. And this Free Trade Agreement what it's done is that, you know, it's worked in three phases of implementation. So we have trade and goods, and the second phase is the IP, intellectual property, and that's where we have expertise. We are taking the IP of our city and then expanding this IP, you know, all over the continent. And the third will be e-commerce. So when we get there by 2043, 
the implementation of that, uh, we're expecting, you know, this continent to be the leading continent in the world in population, in development, and in growth. And we are in the driver's seat leading that now, and we want the Forbes team and the entire continent of Africa and the world, you know, to be able to join us into that. Can yeah. we do that 20 years yeah, from now? You. Let's do it. <laughs> Last question. We're out of time. Uh, you know, I, listen, I met your children. Yes. They're unbelievable. You've got five brilliant kids. They're Thank you. They're brilliant. Thank you. What, you know, we got a lot of brilliant, you know, younger entrepreneurs here. What, you know, if you had to kind of give them one lesson, because so, they, if they look up and say, well, how do I, you know, how do I become that? What's the one, what's the one lesson? Yeah, well, the one big lesson, you know, if you're studying something or you want to be able to develop something in Africa or the world, it's you have to have a vision. You have to look into the vision and look into the future. And then, you know, you focus on the vision and you get it through. You see it through with, you know, building around the community, building around a cause that supports, you know, the entire population in the world, not just your own cause. For example, you know, people ask me, I saw you are with Mohammed here talking about how your billions and Forbes does billion list and all that. If Forbes put me on a billion list, I'll, I'll sue Forbes. I'll take him, you know, to jail to be able to do that. My wealth is how many people are moving out of poverty. Like, you know, that's my billion. How many people are moving out of poverty? Not how many billions I have in the bank and all that. And that's my focus, being a man of God. I want young people to have a vision. Anybody with a vision, whether you're young and old, you focus on that vision, you'll be able to build the world. I love it. I love it. Well, let's, let's do it. We've got a thousand young entrepreneurs here. Yeah, yeah. And if each of you can do what Julius has done, we, you've solved everything here. So that's it. So yeah. think big yeah, yeah. Uh, and have that vision. We have a visionary here, Julius Malawi. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.